Fora TV. The world is thinking. Basically, this is a book about people studying human sexual response, arousal and orgasm, which is a really awkward thing usually to study in a laboratory. Um, it, uh, orgasm, it's, it's interesting. There's a, I, well, I won't go into it because it's a little technical, but it's a, it's a reflex of the autonomic nervous system, and uh, it's triggered by a surprisingly wide, amazingly wide range of stimuli. Don't need to use your hands. No genitals need to be involved. Uh, Kinsey talked to, uh, interviewed a woman who could have orgasm from someone stroking her eyebrow. Uh, another woman who does pressure on her teeth. There are cases of spontaneous orgasm. People have orgasm like 30 times a day. There's a woman, a case study of this woman who I mean, was destroyed her social life. She was in the Middle East. She could no longer, uh, she said, attend religious rituals and visit shrines, understandably. Um, and there's. Uh, there's also, there was a, there's a woman who would have, there's a woman who uh, I interviewed who um, has taught herself to essentially think herself to orgasm. There's a study at Rutgers University where they bring in these women who can use either visualization or breath work. And I interviewed this woman, we were at a sushi restaurant and I said, so could you just do it right here? She said, well, I'd rather finish my meal. Um, but then afterwards on the bench outside, she was very obliging and she, it took her about a minute and yeah, it was, it was very impressive. And I, I said, are you just doing this all the time? Yeah, I loved her, her response. She said, no, usually when I get home at night, I'm too tired. <laughs> she said the last time she did it was on the Disneyland tram. I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> um, the oddest case, I think, was a woman who regularly, every time she brushed her teeth, it would trigger, uh, she'd have an orgasm. And it, uh, you would actually think this woman would have exceptional oral hygiene. <laughs> and, but in fact, she was very, it made her very uncomfortable. She thought she was possessed by demons and actually switched, the paper said, switched to mouthwash for her oral hygiene. She's really sad. But um, it was something like, the, the, it wasn't the toothpaste, they checked that. It wasn't pressure on the gums. It was essentially this complex sensory motor process of toothbrushing and would trigger a tiny uh, seizure in the part of the brain that is connected with orgasm. And, there you go. Um, now, purely by, uh, purely by coincidence, there are three toothbrush stories in this book. Uh, there's the one I just mentioned. There's also one that has to do with the erosolator, which is a vibrator invented by the inventor of the world's first electric toothbrush. And the way this came about, I called the guy and I said, so you just got tired of toothbrushes or what? How did this come about? And he said, Actually, over the years, we had noticed some of the toothbrushes would come through quality control, and it was clear they were being used as vibrators. <laughs> I didn't ask him. I should have asked him like, how it was clear that they were being used this way. Um, and so a light bulb went off in his head, and he thought, all right, let's give him a vibrator. And so this this vibrator that has sort of attachable heads, kind of like the old Broxident toothbrush. Um, and the third toothbrush story involves... Uh, Alfred Kinsey's urethra, and that's all I'm going to say. 